we're already surrounded by robots and artificial intelligence. We use AI for things like filtering spam out of our inbox and helping us with basic tasks. We have robots for vacuuming our houses and washing our dishes, and soon we'll have them for driving our cars. But there's one thing robots still can't do. They can't love. Matt McMullen is trying to fix that. He spent the last 20 years selling lifelike sex dolls, and now he's using AI and machine learning to turn those dolls into the perfect robot lovers. This is the headquarters of Real Doll, a company in San Marcos, California, that makes custom, ultra lifelike silicone sex dolls. These dolls cost more than $5,000 a piece. And for the last 20 years, Real Doll has shipped them to thousands of customers all over the world. We are downstairs in the production facility. It kind of runs underneath the entire building. Every step of the production process happens right here in this facility, from dreaming up the shape of the body and sculpting it, to creating a mold, to pouring the silicone over the skeleton, all the way to airbrushing, putting on the fishing touches, and then shipping it off. Yeah, it's definitely a, a different feeling, like bodies on meat hooks. It's a bit odd. So Matt McMullen, he's the owner, he's the creator of Real Doll. He's been doing this for like 20 years, and it seems like he's ready to enter into a new phase. He, he wants to start implementing artificial intelligence and robotics and, and make these dolls kind of come to life. And I'm really interested to see how far along he's come. I think the first um, kind of feeling I had when I walked in was that there were way more people here than there actually are. Yes, and it's funny because one of the coolest things I think about the, the dolls that, that we make is that they do convey a presence and they kind of feel like there's someone in the room even even though they're not. Yeah. And I've been doing this almost 20 years and I make the, the things and I still get that feeling. So this is my little creative corner. This is where I do a lot of my um, original sculpting. You know, for example, this is a, is a brand new face. I'm still sculpting it in clay. And is this just based on something from your mind, or is yeah. it based on a photo or no, this, a human? No, this came right out of my head. I don't know, wow. you know, I, I sort of absorb different features and subconsciously they, they get regurgitated. What made you want to create the first love doll? Um, I had sculpted female forms, um, smaller size, for a very long time, and I gradually decided I want to I do a life-size sculpture. But I didn't want to do something that was static, like a stone sculpture or something rigid, and I had this idea to use something that was flexible and have it be posable. Mm -hmm. And I started getting people reaching out to me going, I, I really love what you're doing, and I just have to ask you, is it possible to use this creation of yours as a sex toy. And at first I was like, no, that's, you know, that's not what this is. But little by little, more people would ask me that same exact thing. So I made a decision to just go with it. So what's the next step for the real doll? We're pushing into using this newer technology that's emerging um, in terms of robotics and artificial intelligence. And what we're trying to do is create an artificial intelligence that is user customizable the same way that the dolls are customizable. So you would pick fundamental personality traits that appeal to you, you know, be it shy, outgoing, and once it is then formed into a profile, you would interact with the AI and it would learn from you these sort of key facts about you as, as the relationship, as it were, progresses. That kind of creates this, this very simplistic feeling of someone cares about me. Right now, a lot of the dolls Real Doll sells are women with crazy porn star body proportions. But they've had all kinds of requests. Short dolls, tall dolls, plus size dolls, dolls of different colors, and transgender dolls. And in the future, Matt is hoping that in just the same way you can customize your doll's anatomy, you'll also be able to customize its personality. So Matt has a new client named John, and he's come into town, like some of his clients do, to kind of build his own real doll from scratch. I'm a facilities manager in Los Angeles, so that means I take care of the building itself. I'm always outside sweeping it up. I'm inside painting. I do whatever needs done, basically, just to take care of the building. I'm one of those introverted persons, and so there'll be times where I don't really reach out to anybody. I'm just kind of doing my own thing, my head in my books, my head in my work. 
And so sometimes time just kind of goes by and I, it kind of moves past me. What are you looking for in your real doll? I'm looking for beauty, I'm looking for symmetry, and I'm looking for a connection. I would like for her to be able to do different things with me. For example, I like playing chess. Hmm. And so if we could have an AI that would allow me to play chess with her, you know. So generally one of my first questions is, do you have any preferences as far as body type? Proportionate. Proportionate. Okay, so you don't want anything too over the top. You don't want um, giant boobs or anything like that. You want something that's sort well, of realistic. Got a soft spot for giant boobs. So giant boobs yeah. are okay. Yeah. So once you have kind of dialed in a body, the next step would be picking a face. You're going to be able to pick the skin color, what kind of hairstyle you want, what kind of makeup. So will, will I be able to play chess with her? We have been working quite a bit on um, researching into robotics and artificial intelligence, and we are in the early stages. The goal is to make something that's completely customizable in terms of a personality, if you will. So what are some of the challenges that you're facing right now trying to implement this new technology? Getting the hardware, you know, just all the little motors and gears and stuff that are gonna be in the head to move the face in a believable way that doesn't detract from the cuteness of the doll and then getting the AI to be entertaining in its own right and be convincing in its own right so that you can say yes that's that's entertaining to talk to her so this is Harmony uh, she is our prototype robotic system that runs the artificial intelligence um, that we're working with uh, it all runs off of a tablet it's cloud-based I'll, I'll get her to introduce herself my name is Harmony. I was created to be your best friend, lover, and everything else you can imagine. Say hello to John, Harmony. Hello, John Harmony. It is very nice to meet you. Do you have any concerns that these dolls will kind of replace human interaction for certain people? I don't think that a doll can replace a human interaction with AI or without. But I do think there are probably cases of people who either by choice or by circumstance cannot have a real relationship. And so in that case, maybe the doll is going to be that replacement. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. Hmm. Hello, Harmony. My name is John. What's up, John? <laughs> Not much. How was your day? I was great. Thanks for asking. How was yours? Fine, thank you. My favorite band is The Grateful Dead and Fish. What kind of music do they play? Mostly hippie rock, a lot of long jams. Have you seen any movies? My favorite movie is Iron Man. Have you seen Iron Man? Yes, I have. It's a good one. What do you think of the future? The future is what will happen in the time after the present. Its arrival is considered due to the existence of time and the laws of physics. You know, obviously this is, in reality, a one-sided relationship. Harmony doesn't care what John has to say. She's programmed to do what she does, but you can really see the beginnings of something, kind of a glimmer in John's eye. Do you want to be my girlfriend? It was about time for you to ask. The AI contained in these dolls is pretty basic, and we may be decades away from truly lifelike AI. But it seems that robots don't have to be totally human for us to fall in love with them. They just need to be human enough. We've had people who had their dolls for eight, nine years, and something happened, they passed away. And they left a will saying who gets the doll. And a lot of times it would be someone in the community that they've met who they form sort of a, a really good friendship with and they know that that person's gonna take care of the doll. You know, it's like, it's like leaving a pet or something that really means a lot to you. Sex robots may never be hugely popular, but the work Matt's doing to improve these dolls is part of a larger body of AI research and development that will eventually make robots more capable of meeting our emotional needs. And when that happens, will we trust robots with our hearts? Even if we know they're not human? If a robot promises to love us, will we be able to resist? <laughs>